Hello YouTubers, hello subscribers. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm not going to be long, but I did want to get on here and give a special thank you to Sue Smith for her um, for her shout out. She, um, her last video that she did recently, she gave me a big shout out and I was at like 889 subscribers and overnight I'm at a thousand. So I got really emotional. I was so grateful. Thank you so much. It really means a lot to me. Thank you. And I also want to thank um, some of my subscribers that comment all the time. Like we're right, um, we, we go back and forth with each other. And I like to pin their information at the top of my videos. And so take a look at um, what um, my subscribers have to say when I pin that because they're great. They have, um, they have great content. They're really listening to my videos and responding. And I, and I really appreciate them. I'm not going to be on here long. I really wanted to just come on here and thank, um, everyone and toast to you guys for me hitting 1000. Oh, it's so exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. While I'm on here, though, I want to mention a few things that I um, heard through, through YouTube. A couple of things. Number one, Megan is upset. Word on the street that she's upset about South Park. Okay? She's she's mad. She doesn't want to, like, she's just pissed hot. Of course she is. They called you shallow. They said you didn't have anything inside you, that you're empty. Harry said that. South Park Harry. <laughs> I think that was a defining moment for me in the South Park entire um, episode. Was that when he opened her up. And looked inside and realized that that wasn't anything in there. To me, it was almost like South Park was trying to give Harry a hint. Like we all are. But no one's listening. No one's home. And let me tell you why no one's home. Because she's she is empty. She is shallow. And the very thing that she didn't want to happen to her reputation is happening. Because... When she was over there in the UK, the press wasn't nearly, nearly coming after her like the United States is coming after her and Harry. They are being treated like laughing stocks. And contrary to popular belief, Hollywood is not loving on them. There might be two or three, but no. And the Met Gala will get to that. And so... You can't tell me that she's having a more difficult time now than she did when she was blaming the royal family, saying that they were throwing her to the wolves and wasn't protecting her and Harry and security wasn't available and they wouldn't write a story on her behalf to protect her. It just amazes me how all of a sudden Megan thinks that she's entitled to all these privileges after she marries Harry. Who told you that, Harry? Because according to Harry's book, Megan, um, he doesn't want to be a role anymore. And that his family isn't worth, it's just a really bad family, according to his book. So why would you want anything from them? Why would, why would you, Megan, Marco, I'm talking to you. Why would you want anything from a royal family that is racist, that made you suicidal, and threw you to the wolves. I'm confused. You talk about his family as if they did nothing for you and, and as if they owe you something or as if you're entitled to it. You got married to Harry and he allowed you to have these privileges. And Harry was already given these privileges because he was born into privilege. 
But now that he's whining about it since he met you, the question is, why are you even trying to be a part of the royal family anymore, Harry? Or why are you trying to blackmail your family or get them to do anything that you want them to do, like a summit? If there are these people that, um, that you and Megan don't like, here's the deal. Your father is the king. And as such, you are, you talk to us in this book like you're spoiled and you feel like you're entitled to all these things. Especially when he came around with the five, with the, with the five options. That blew my mind. You don't have options, Harry. You decided that you wanted to leave. Remember? You're the spare. So why would you get any, anything, any, any, any benefits, any security, any money, anything that you think you should be entitled to after you and Megan was running from your family? You lied and said it was the press because you got too many stories going on. You got the press is after you and now you got your family. Because when I read Spare, your family was after you. But for the life of me, I just can't understand why would you want anything from your racist family? Why would you want the titles? Why would you want to be a part of them? Why would you even want to bring their name up if they mistreated Megan so badly? And what kills me is, is that you mention in the book that Megan asked you, do we get security? No, no, not that do we get security. Is security still available, isn't it? No, it wasn't even like that. They're taking our security away. There it is. You never had security. You were a D-lister actress and you still are. But you happen to fall into the arms of a prince. Excuse me. You snuck and manipulated your way into the arms of a prince. You had a date with Pierce Morgan. This came up. I don't know which channel I re heard it from. You had a date with um, a Pierce Morgan. You ghosted Pierce Morgan, and now everybody wants to say that Pierce Morgan is upset with that. Pierce Morgan is married and moved on. Are you serious? And if I'm wrong, I don't know what Pierce Morgan is doing. I'm just saying that. But my point is, is that he had you pinpointed from the beginning. You were looking for a man. You were looking for somebody rich that could help you catapult yourself for your career, get your career off the ground, get you in Montecito, and get you next to the who's and who's, and then try to see if you can be president one day. I be dang. That is when I will be right there in Congress writing letters and letting them know that she is not competent to run for presidency. Stop it. And, and let's put it this way. I would vote for Donald Trump before I vote for her. And that says a lot. That's my family. I don't trust her. She's a manipulator. She is, it's all about for her. South Park brought it home. I'm not done with South Park. Because they looked into her mouth, um, Harry, and, and they are giving him, they're letting Harry know, this is who you're sleeping with. This is your wife. Opens up her mouth. There's nothing in there. She's empty. Megan feels she's entitled to all this stuff. Why are you so pissed off, Megan? You, tr you tried to create the narrative that you were this princess, but it didn't go as well as you thought because you thought bashing your family would get you sympathy and play at the heartstrings of us and make us turn against them, but it's you that we're looking at because people cannot believe that such a pretty person, pretty educated woman like yourself would be this evil and sinister. This is what happened. And 
let, let me let me digress a little bit because remember she doesn't look at the news she doesn't look at the news she doesn't look at the tabloids she doesn't do any of that because it's all bad but then she wants to tell us that in the palace there's all kinds of news clippings everywhere that you can go see and look no it ain't i'm sure there is a spot you can go to probably you know evaluate look at it and stuff like that or whatever if you wanted to But I don't think Charles, William, and Kate are sitting around wondering, okay, when is their next docuseries is coming out? And put plastering it all over the wall in the palace. No. You are up at night searching yourself and trying to figure out what's going on with your per person uh, popularity. And I'm here to tell you, nothing. It's as worse as it was. It First of all, it wasn't even bad when you left the UK. But now, I told y'all where it was. It was in the toilet. Flush down, gone. So she's at home yelling at Harry. And now South Park has become his problem. It's, I could rehearse this and tell you exactly what's going on because it's in the book. Every time Megan starts whining like a two-year-old, Harry tries to come to the rescue to save her. But I done told Harry that he that job is too big for him and he'll never be able to please her. Okay, that is not happening today, tomorrow, or ever. So she whines on Harry's shoulder and tells him, you're talking about me on South Park. How dare they? Nope, they have a right. Because you put yourself in this situation. You look like a person of no character, of no morals, no empathy, nothing. There's nothing inside of there. South Park was trying to find your soul. I almost didn't say that. Because that's, find your soul. Because Samantha father, Charles, K, you know, the list of people that she has attacked and taken down because she feels entitled and think that she needs to prove something to who? To us? That you're a, a, this this nice person? No. You got home. Harry, y'all, you surfed in it. South, you watched the South Park episode and you didn't get anything out of that? Let me tell you something. Me, I'm always taking accountability accountability for myself and doing inventory and trying to figure out how if I do something wrong or, or, or something like that, if something goes wrong, what could I have done better to have changed the situation, the outcome? Not anybody else. I check myself first. And instead of Megan watching South Park and actually listening and excusing the, the, the profanity part and the, and the stupidness. That do you not see that America and Great Britain and the rest of the world is seeing you as a really sinister person? And the only thing that you can, that can come out of your mouth, Megan, is Harry, Harry, they're, they're messing with me. No, Harry can't help you. No, he left his help back in the UK, remember? Shh. You can't. Listen, your popularity sucks right now. And the media, they come in. They here. <laughs> South Park, baby. She's whining to Harry. And then Harry wakes up out of his sleep. He's trying to get some rest because he's sick of her. He didn't done everything he told she told him to do. The book, go against his family. Everything. Mistreat the queen and his father. Like one of my YouTubers said, she came out with the Oprah, Oprah interview knowing that her father-in-law was sick and wasn't well. So Harry jumps out of bed 
and says, oh no, Megan, let me help you. Let's sue South Park. <laughs> Listen, South Park, we got your back. We're going to help defend you. We're going to help um, any way we can to support this um, series, this episode. You can't sue every time someone says something about you, Megan, because you would have a list of people. A list. There's like a list. And so... Just because South Park decided to bust you wide open on a national stage, you go run into Harry and thinking, let's sue, let's sue. You're already in a lawsuit. Won't you deal with that one? And guess what that one is based off of? Your lies. How does she sleep at night? I just would be like, oh God, I got, trust me. How does she sleep at night with all this chaos? She's not sleeping. She's up at night plotting and planning and um, putting things in books and, and, and blaming people and, and, and then lying, talking about she had a miscarriage because she was up at all night worried about a lawsuit. Well, you got, you got the one for Samantha now. Who you going to blame that one on? No, Harry is running around. And going to be fighting her battles for the rest of his life. This is your new life, Harry? Suing every time you get get a moment? <laughs> but then, they're blackmailing the royal family. Because they got a whole book deal. <laughs> You're the laughing stock. The Met Gala. Let's move on. There's about two or three people at the Met Gala that actually probably like them. And careful because the dislike for Megan as far as like us is real. And we are the critics. We're the big, bigger critics because we're the people. We're not in Hollywood. We're not celebrities. So we're going to take you at face value. And what we're seeing is, ugh. And I don't think that Hollywood is embracing them as we think. I think the Met Gala is throwing them a bone to help them. But I wouldn't throw them anything, Met Gala. I wouldn't invite in them anywhere. And this is why. Until they start taking accountability for the nastiness that they're doing and stop suing people that's telling the truth. They're going to always think that they're entitled to do this and continue to push the narrative. Megan is not backing down on her lies, her porcupines. And when Samantha told us that this is who she is, that's scary. That she's an impulsive liar, a, a, an impulsive storyteller person that just decides to tell stories, forget the consequences. Harry, you're not going to be able to make her happy. So now you got to sue these people because Megan didn't like being called empty. Um, Paula, she's another YouTuber. She has a channel. I was watching something that she put out today. And I've been hearing this a lot about Megan's pregnancy. And I always thought to myself that I... I, ne I didn't know one way or another. I just assumed she had the babies and they're hers. She looked swole to me when she was um, out and about, when she had Archie. When she did have Archie, which I believe, I don't know, and this is why I don't know anymore, because I would never question it. She just looked puffy and swole and looked like she needed to lose weight. You can't get puffy in the face. And, and and be like, oh, she, she didn't get pregnant. No, that was baby swollen stuff in her face and in her legs and in her thighs. She was huge after she had Archie. Not 
humongous, but I'm saying she pretty much had her baby fat on her. That's what I'm trying to say. But this is where this is where I started saying, uh-oh, wait a minute. Paula, and I hope I'm saying her name right, she has a, a big follower following. Paula M, I believe. And she says that when the royal fam when when anyone in the royal family have kids back before, like when Elizabeth was here, they used to have it where the doctor would actually see the baby come out, the you know, write it on a piece of paper and say it's official. You know, um, Elizabeth had uh, Charles, you know, she took that away. So it wouldn't be so like, okay, get out the, get, get out my room. I'm trying to have a baby kind of thing. So instead of having the doctor do all that, um, according to Paula, they did like a, a, um, a, a good faith system, like, um, not good faith system, but, um, tell the truth or something like that. Like we were going to believe that you had a baby regardless. But the point was, is that once you had a baby, you came out the steps, they announced it, and you get the whole royal treatment. We didn't get that with Megan. I was disappointed in that. I was extremely disappointed that we didn't get to see her walk down the steps and hold the baby. And once again, I just think she was being difficult. I didn't like it. I was really disappointed. I told my husband, I said, we've been waiting on that. I said, that's what we wait for. We wait for them to come down the steps and hold the baby and so we can just see them off. And I know it's probably not the, the funnest thing for, for them to do. But let me tell you something. We get a kick out of it. We love it. We just, it's just, ooh, it's wonderful. But we didn't get that with Megan. Let me move on. I feel like I'm rattling on. But the point is, is that Paula was saying that there is no record right now of her there's no record showing that she had Archie or little bit. It's not public and it's supposed to be made public so we can see so that the British people and everyone would know that it is truly, truly a, um, a descendant from royalty. Because if, and it all has to do with money too, because if I'm gonna, and the titles, if I'm going to bestow upon, if, if, if Elizabeth is going to give you a title, then that title you, it comes with privileges, meaning security, money, and, and all the royal prestige. But like Paula said, she said that it's not written anywhere. There's no record. She's been looking for it and it's supposed to be there. And so A, Megan's just being difficult and won't let us see the record. Or, like she said, did she actually have the baby? Who had Archie and Lilibet? I'm not really questioning it, but I see why she is. Because it's supposed to be public record. I was on here longer than I expected to be, 23 minutes. I hope I didn't bore you guys too much. I am going to take a break, but I really wanted to say thank you to all my supporters Thank you to my thousand. I am just over the moon. Me and my husband, we're going to toast tonight and just have a great night. And I owe it all to you guys. Kisses.